wonderfully at a proper time the concept of basic structure has been brought into the constitution whereby the excesses of a majoritarian government has been curbed for the future and the constitution sanctity was upheld. Today it is very important that the constitution is being owned by the people of India. The other day I read in the paper that a group of people in Jadis Shagat Nair Stadium in Rwanda have taken a note that they will contribute to upholding the constitution, read it, understand it and disseminate the content of the constitution. We need to develop a constitutional culture, constitutionalism. It's already growing but not confined to lawyers and judges or law teachers and law students but to the 130 crores of people. And this, if it happens, India would be a model for constitutional governance. To a diverse country like India, under democratic rule, through the rule of law, can manage to secure individual liberties and an accountable government. That will be a model for the world to follow. So let us remember on this occasion that a Constitution Day its importance and celebrate. I would make very quickly my presentation in three parts. The first part is much easier after having heard uh, Justice uh, David Ramachandran. The first part will be a quick review of the evolution of the concept of constitutional thought or what is called public law remedy for wrongful arrest, wrongful prosecution or wrongful conviction. And in this country, this is very, very necessary because of the high-handedness of the investigative and prosecutorial machinery and the half the population are poor and ignorant and they are at the mercy of these agents of the state. In the second part, I would like to address the inadequacies of the existing law. Not that we don't have a law for remedy to wrongful arrest and wrongful, particularly after DK Basu. But how inadequate that remedy, including the civil law remedy of prompt action, that will be developed in the second part. And in the final part, I would take you through the Nambinara and gentlemen what is in store in the observations of that uh, gentleman, as well as what has been suggested by the Law Commission of India in a report submitted on this subject only in August 2018, the 277th report. That will be my three-part presentation. So taking very quickly through the first part, well, we all know that the court is a private action, it's a civil remedy, and you have the usual court action through the civil courts. Unfortunately, in our country, court action has not grown because of a variety of procedural problems, because of the problem of court fee, because of the problem of delay in the system, because of the problem of proof and evidence. So much so, it is almost non-existent. The Delhi High Court has characterized it as uh, non-affordable and uh, hopeless, the civil remedy, be that as it be. For a variety of reasons, this court action therefore has not been resorted in our country and uh, people are helpless against the excesses of the state and state agencies. The principle of law that was evolved, you know, in initial uh, the king can do no wrong principle enunciated in Vidyavadi in terms of immunity for the state for the wrongs committed by its servants and how Kasturilal changed the situation slightly, they are all known to you, I don't have to. But that did not make any change in the access to redress of wrongful arrest and detention and custodial torture and things like that which are frequent in our country, including encounter deaths. Therefore, the poverty of law to compensate victims of police high-handedness in arrest and detention was brought out recently in a very high court judgment, which is the genesis on which the law commission has made its report. This is Pablo versus Government of Delhi, uh, 2 
and detention and custodial torture. It invoked Article 14 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, under which state parties are obliged to make law to compensate victims of miscarriage of justice. And if you look into the, the legislation of countries like Germany, England, Canada, Australia, United States, they have an exhaustive law framed under Article 14 of the ICCPR, wherein the state obligation to compensate is accepted and the procedure for determining compensation is prescribed and the courts, not only the red courts, but all courts coming across such wrongful arrest and detention and torture have to give compensation irrespective of the civil law remedy which still exists and so put to the person to uh, simultaneously continue and get unliquidated damages as talk, in any talk action would require. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, this is the context in which Supreme Court made constitutional talks actionable in a red court for appropriate compensation with the right for the victim to seek civil remedies kept under the private law. The mention need to be made by uh, and Honorable uh, Justice has made a mention of Milavadi Bhaira versus State of Orissa, uh, AR 1993, Supreme Court 1960. This is a very important judgment in the evolution of constitutional laws and compensation for violation of fundamental rights. The court in that case observed, and I quote, the award of compensation in real proceedings is a remedy under public law based on strict liability for contravention of fundamental rights, strict liability. And that the principle of sovereign immunity is inapplicable in cases involving violation of fundamental rights, though it is an available defense in the case of private law action. In a civil law action, the sovereign immunity could be claimed, whether it will be allowed in the present circumstances, I am not sure about. The court further observed that the state in such cases, after giving compensation for violation of fundamental right, in turn has the right to be indemnified by the concerned officers in accordance with law. That is in our Give compensation irrespective of the fact that the civil law already still lies, and after having given compensation, if the court finds that certain people, though the vicarious liability principle will still remain, but if it is a deliberate act on the part of the police officer doing wrongful prosecution and wrongful arrest, the, state, the court can allow the state to proceed against that officer to indemnify the compensation paid by the state. That was also acknowledged in Nila Pritibara case. Well, therefore, um, that is the evolution and we will have a little more detail when we look into the third part on Mambina Raya Gentleman. Now what are the inadequacies of the law? There are three types of remedies as we know. One is the civil law remedy which is as the very high court said inefficacious uh, of no use is not efficacious, not affordable and not timely. And then if people cannot afford therefore it is almost non-existent or of no use. So what are the existing uh, of the civil law remedy and the criminal law remedy? If you look into the IPC and CRPC, there are provisions for wrongful uh, leading of evidence and wrongful arrest where the liability is of the officer to pay, not that of the state. And that 2000 rupees or something is mentioned in Macaulay's court. Anyway, Therefore, the criminal law remedy or the civil law remedy are not effective. And thanks to the Supreme Court's concept of constitutional law, there is an effective remedy to discipline the lawlessness of the police, particularly the police. And if this is not to go through, it will be miscarriage of justice. It should not happen in a country which has promised so many fundamental rights to every citizen of the country, not only to urban educated people, but the 
people in the rural and tribal countryside who are at the receiving end of forest officials or police officials exploit and right and left with no remedy whatsoever. The magistrate asked the person, you know, today Justice Kuruk in the morning was telling me why he was the chairman of the police complaints authority. Every other person who complains, complain that the police have not served him. But when he was produced before the magistrate, he said, no, no, police gave me all the papers. So therefore, this is a situation of poor, ignorant people who do not know about their rights will have to face. This must end. This is the social responsibility of the legal profession. And here is an opportunity provided to us by the Supreme Court. We must make a law so that other courts could also give when they notice such a atrocity is being perpetrated by state agencies. So therefore what I wanted to suggest is in the absence of a framework law like other developed countries, the judicial principle of compensating violation of fundamental right, the claim is articulated as a right, the quantum of compensation is to be determined. It's a book, it depends on the debt concern. It cannot be like that. If you think that it's a constitutional remedy, then you have to proceed on under what circumstances it would be given, what will be the quantum that it would be given. In Ambedkar case, perhaps the Supreme Court would have given one crore. But Ambedkar, I mean, he will clarify the thing. He was more concerned with punishing the police officials rather than getting a higher quantum of compensation. That's very important. This uncertainty and advocism, the vital area of law, which came out prominently in Andam, Bhai, Ajmer, and others versus State of Gujarat. This is the Akshar Dham temple attack case, where the accused persons, several of them, spent more than 10 years in jail before getting admitted by the Supreme Court, finding investigation and conviction totally groundless but did not award any compensation and when the people who were admitted they came back and said well we have been up in the and the uh, and all that give us compensation in very very different events and that then said well if every admitted person come back and ask for compensation what do we do? It will be chaos and therefore they refuse. Where is the remedy now? The court, the Supreme Court itself has said, it's a wrong conviction, no evidence, all staff is being framed, arrested, detained for 10 years. And then they say, no, no, we don't give compensation because the consequence will be terrible. So what? Terrible consequences in their cases will be the law. The court did observe that the police, instead of booking the real culprits, this is the actual judgment, police, instead of booking the real culprits, caught innocent people and subjected them to grievous charges. And a separate petition seeking compensation, this was the reaction of the court. Well, we know that in D.K. Vasu's judgment, which was referred to, Supreme so Court distinguished public law proceedings from private law proceedings. What is the difference in the matter of compensation for miscarriage of justice or wrongful arrest or uh, malicious prosecution? Public law remedies serve a different purpose than the private law remedy for a top action. What are they? One, it is simply civilizing public power. You do. You know, the ultimate purpose of the constitution is to civilize the exercise of public power by those who have been interested for a certain exercise of public function. As this civilization, civilizing process of the policemen happened through 70 years of freedom by administering criminal justice, by having court action, no. So therefore the writ remedy that is now sought under public law remedy has the function of civilizing public power. Number two, to assure the citizens of India that they live under a legal system 
where their right shall be protected and preserved. There is somebody to hear you. You are not helpless. To convey to the every citizen of India this message, which is contained in the Constitution, that is the purpose of the same public law remedy. And thirdly, damages pursuant to a civil action are different from compensation under Article 32 and 226. Because the former is dependent on the rights available under the private law, whereas the latter, that is the public law remedy, is compensation in the nature of exemplary damages for breach of public duty for protecting fundamental right. Having taken the responsibility to protect fundamental right, the state and its agencies are violating, they themselves are violating. Well, in that case, it is compensation to be given, not damages, exemplary damages. That is the difference between damages in top action and compensation in public law remedy. I don't want to go into the remedies provided under the criminal procedure. It's so useless. I wish that those sections are abolished from the criminal procedure. Unless you have a special law, there is no way that criminal justice can help victims of crime. My last submission is uh, the scheme proposed by the Supreme Court in Namina Rai I would like to quote from the judgment. Uh, the judgment incomplete in one way because it calls for action through a committee to be appointed. This is the quote. I quote, the lackadaisical attitude of the state police to arrest anyone and put him in police custody. 4,000 were arrested in Chattanooga episode and more arrests are going on. Anyone and put him in police custody has made the appellant to suffer the ignominy. Custodial torture does not necessarily mean infliction of physical harm. The dignity of a person gets shocked when psychopathological treatment is meted out to him. That warrants grant of compensation under public law remedy. The reputation of a person, the court said, is an insecure fact of his right to life with dignity, which is what a wrongful arrest result in consequence. It is on this reasoning the court directed the state of Kerala to pay some of the 50 lakhs within eight weeks towards compensation for the violation of the right to life and liberty of Naminara. The other remedy which uh, Naminarayan asked for from the court, the court did not ignore it. The court did not say, you want compensation, now you get out. No. The court realized that the apex court laying down the law and it must have a message civilizing public power. It must be able to tell every other Indian who is being victimized by the police, you are not helpless, we are here. How to convey that message? This is what the court says. The Supreme Court, the remedy asked for was disciplinary action against civilian police officials for conducting malicious investigation on which the state government repeatedly refused on the grounds that it was not proper or legal to take disciplinary action against the officers on the basis of the CPI, CPI reports after a lapse of 15 years. Is it the excuse? After a lapse of how many years it takes for a case to complete? 15 to 20 years? And because 15 years lapsed, forget about it, no way. The High Court which considered the matter also said that when a decision that is unfortunate, the High Court where Nambi has pleaded for assistance and this to say, when a decision has been taken by the government not to proceed further with any disciplinary action, after considering relevant factors, the decision cannot be considered as unreasonable, unfair or arbitrary. That is what Kerala High Court said. The court further added that whether the accused was tortured or not is a disputed question of fact to be decided by a competent court in justification for the government inaction. So the court sided with the Kerala government for its inaction not to proceed against the officials who deliberately made a false case and arrest and tortured Manjina Ryan. Given the above observation, what would the Supreme Court do? 
there was observation of a division when they became the high court. The Supreme Court was obviously reluctant to order disciplinary action straight away without the contested factual issues being resolved one way or the other. Therefore, in order for obtaining the factual scenario on the role of hearing officials, by a committee headed by a former Supreme Court judge, with the representative of the central government and the representative of the state government, appointed to ascertain the facts and to find out ways and means to take appropriate steps against the hearing officials. I don't know. Will you be able to tell us whether the committee is constituted? The former Supreme Court judge B.K. Jain is to be the chairman of that. Uh, the order in this regard is an acknowledgement of the gravity with which the apex court has due illegal arrests and malicious prosecutions taking place in the criminal justice system in our country and the and need to put in place corrective measures for protection of fundamental rights of innocent citizens. Now why this was happening, and that's my last point, the reference from the Delhi High Court to the Law Commission was being attended to by the Law Commission. And in a hurried manner, the 277 the report of the Law Commission, a copy of which is with me, was submitted in August 2018. On wrongful arrest and prosecution within bracket miscarriage of justice bill and the legal remedies bill. And they have acknowledged the fact that the existing remedies are totally inadequate. The public law remedy is to be effective, but that only reports can give. Therefore, there should be a comprehensive legislation which will make it an entitlement, a right of every citizen who has been victimized by police excesses or abuse of power to get compensation for the wrong done. And that model law is available in Germany, in England, in America, Australia, Canada. We have to make the law. And the law commission has made the law. It has made a definition of what is malicious prosecution and what is a wrongful prosecution or wrongful arrest and prosecution. They have defined it. I don't have the time to go into that. And they have prepared the procedure to be followed in order to make compensation for wrongful as well as malicious prosecution, arrest, torture, or uh, custody, custodial interrogation, and things like that. This is very necessary because the law commission has quoted the report of the National Crime Records Bureau. Shocking. In our country, there are about 4.5 lakh prisoners in the various jails in India in 2015. Now it may be more. Out of these 4.5 lakh prisoners, 72% are undercrime prisoners. And several of them are there as undercrime prisoners beyond 4 to 5 years. 70% were undercrime people arrested and imprisoned during investigation and trial. And 3,600 of them remained as undercrime for 5 years or more. What a tragedy in this country. Who are these people there? Why are they not going on the way? Why are they waiting for a day for five years and more? We are accountable, the lawyers and judges of this country. Be that as it be. And in the same year, 82,585 under trials were released after being found innocent. Nearly a lack of people have been released after finding innocent. By the time they will have spent one year, two years already as undercrime prisoners without any compensation. The Supreme Court in a series of judgments attempted to mitigate the situation by what we have discussed earlier. Therefore, the Law Commission felt that there is no other way except to have a comprehensive law and they have provided a bill in the report wherein malicious prosecution, wrongful arrest and their detention, these are defined wherein the victims have a right to get compensation. And once it is a right, naturally you can get it from any court of law where the innocents have been proved. And uh, it is very comprehensive definition because it's a wrongful prosecution, the category of prosecution instituted without good faith. 
which concluded in favor of the accused and include such acts making or fabricating a false or incorrect record or document for submission to the court. That is malicious uh, wrongful prosecution. Making a false declaration or statement before an officer authorized by law to receive evidence. Giving false evidence when legally bound by oath to state the truth. Fabricating false evidence for submission. Suppression or destruction of evidence to prevent its production. Bringing a false charge or instituting false proceedings against a person. Or committing a person to confinement or fire acting contrary to law. All these seven different actions on the part of the police are coming as wrongful prosecution, which are compensable under the uh, law commission legislation. Well, uh, I don't want to go into the quantification of damages and the procedure to be followed, etc. But I do recommend to the lawyer community that you must agitate in the matter. Ask for compensation from the big court when an appropriate situation arises. And then, naturally by that time I hope the government will pass a law for which again we have to lobby. Because who will lobby for these victims? For the rich and influential people, there are ways of getting out of the criminal justice system without being tortured and harassed. So those who are, those are 86,500 people, one year being released as under five prisoners on the innocent. They have lost their job if they had any. They have lost their family. They have no reputation to lose. If at all they have, but their dignity and self-respect is affected. What a tremendous infliction of injury is happening in this country under a liberal constitution. Can this be tolerated in a rule of law country? Certainly not. Think about it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much for presenting the subject, Mr. Dean and Mr. Dean. And I request 